PlayStation has now come up with their version of Xbox Game Pass, their equivalent to Xbox Game Pass, as some people would say, including me. Now I have tried this service on my PlayStation 5 and I will explain it all for you. PlayStation Plus has been a subscription service for a lot of years. I believe they started that in 2010. Now, what that has given me over the years is cloud saves. All of my save files are stored up in the cloud, which I really much appreciate. I would hate to lose any save file. Now, that is my personal prime reason for having PlayStation Plus, and I have had it for all the years. Another thing you have always gotten with normal PlayStation Plus are two and sometimes three free games to put into your library which you can access as long as you have a active PS Plus subscription but I have mainly done it for the save files and maybe the two extra games or whatever. Now there are three tiers of PlayStation Plus. You have the essential, the extra and the premium. The essential one is the same PlayStation Plus more or less as you are used to. It is $10 a month, $59 annually if I remember correctly. It's the same stuff. Now let's go into extra extra and premium. Let's see what they have to offer. With extra, which I believe will be the most popular tier, you get access to about 400 or more, or was it less? About 400 PS4 and PS5 games. Now this is their equivalent squiggly fingers, to Xbox's Game Pass. With premium, on the other hand, even more expensive, which is $120 annually, if I remember correctly again, you get everything from the previous tiers, including a classic library of PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and PS3 games. But those are cloud streamed only, which worked perfectly fine on my internet connection. Now, how do I feel about it all? First of all, we just have to realize that we are entering a time where subscriptions are all the things that companies want from us consumers. They want our subscription in like Spotify, Netflix, even YouTube Premium, Xbox, Nintendo, PlayStation, all these subscriptions. It is a great business model for the companies. I understand all of that. They want a steady recurring revenue from us consumers. It's just the way of the world right now. And it's gonna be more prominent in the future, definitely. I have a feeling about that. Cloud gaming and streaming games off clouds is also starting to be a big thing. And I think that will only become more and more a big thing. Maybe later down the line, we won't even have a console. We will only purchase a controller. And through the controller, everything will be streamed off a cloud somewhere. That is maybe the future. <laughs> now the downside to subscriptions is that you lose access to games when you cancel it. So it could be a trap. I mean, imagine if you are deep within a game and you don't really own the game, you only have access to it through the subscription. You lose access to the game if you cancel your subscription. They are sneaky that way. They are hooking you in and they want you to stay with them, is my feeling. Now. Do I think there's value in premium? That depends on the games list. I saw a few games that I have never played before, but I knew that I wanted to try out, but nothing too fancy for me on the premium side of things. Now I can gladly say that a lot of the Atelier games are on PlayStation Premium. Atelier, our land series and Dusk Trilogy. I fired up Atelier Aisha, looking really nice, running smoothly, looking like it should look. But I was curious if I could continue my PS3 save file, which I know is cloud stored because I logged onto my PS3 to see if my Atelier Aisha game is in the cloud. And yes, it is. But on my PlayStation 5, I can only access PS4 and PS5 cloud saves, which then makes me not able to continue my Atelier game, which is a PS3 game over on my PS5. That was a bummer. That was actually a bummer. I didn't like that, that I had to start over again, I mean. Now I also saw Epic Mickey 2 on there. I wanna replay that game, so cute. Kingdoms of Amular is also on there, highly recommend. But I saw Gravity Rush. Now, I have now access to Gravity Rush 1 and 2. They are games that I have been looking at for quite some time. Now is the time I will dive into them. Do I feel that there is value? I would say essential is essential. 
if you care about your progress in games, I guess for the cloud saves, it's like my insurance of my save files, which I know we all put hundreds of hours into. You know how devastating it is to lose a save file, whichever way that happens, I don't know. But if your console breaks, for some reason in the universe, you lose your save file, that is just too devastating. I cannot have that. Now, I feel like extra is the way to go. I recommend PlayStation Extra plus extra, I mean, which is the mid tier because you get that catalog, which is very nice. You can cancel your subscription anytime, I, but I, I recommend that. Now premium, now that is for the especially interested, I think, with the classics library. That is just my honest take on the entire thing. Now, I have a few questions that you asked me on Discord. Let's go over them. The first question is, how do you decide which platform to get a game for? I first decide <laughs> based on exclusivity, obviously. If something is exclusive to Nintendo, now that is no question then. But other than that, then I decide on what type of game is it? Is it a game that I want to be able to bed game, play on the couch, lie down and handheld play? Then it is the Switch, no doubt. If it is a sort of game that I would like to have on a big screen, on the TV, and sit comfortably with a controller in my hands, I would choose to play that on the PlayStation or the Xbox. And lastly, I decide whether performance is really important to me or not. If it is supposed to be a graphics heavy game, I would much rather play it on my PlayStation 5 than on the Switch, because the Switch is just not as powerful. The Switch is more for bed games gaming and handheld gaming. Now lastly I decide based on whether I want to do trophy hunting or not and I guess I could also add that if a game is on multiple systems I may also pick the system that currently has a sale on that game. <laughs> Now, another question that I got is, are most PS4 to PS5 patches a major improvement? And I would say for the most part, yes. And I have upgraded Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I definitely noticed better loading times and it looks really good. I think it looks good. Tiny has said it didn't look good, but I think it looks good. Now Skyrim, we know that story and looks really just way much better. <laughs> way much better. Looking really good. Loading screens are perfectly short now. Now I upgraded. Now I upgraded Atelier Risa also to its PS5 version. Now that game looks good on the PS4 to begin with. Either way, it's perfect. The improvements of uh, PS4 to PS5 patches are, for the most part, shorter loading times, better textures, and 4K support. Sometimes HDR support also makes the game just pop more. Now another question is, how noisy is the console? <laughs> I would say it's very noisy when it is reading a disc. You can hear it through the floor. But other than that, not very noisy. What are your most anticipated PS5 games? I am saying Two Point Campus. I have decided now that I am going to play that on my PlayStation 5. Very much looking forward to it because I've been so obsessed with the previous game. This is gonna be so good, hopefully. Now, Stray is also a game that's coming out. It is a cat game, a cat RPG game, and it has really nice graphics. I'm sure you have seen this trailer. Everyone talked about it a, a week or two ago, I feel like. Stray, because cats are everything. Now, I have written down Soul Hackers 2, which is an Atlas game in the Megami Tensei series universe. It has that graphical style that I like, the colorfulness. It looks to be a turn-based RPG and it's looking really good. I will play that on my PlayStation 5. Another game is Hogwarts Legacy. I have never really been a Harry Potter fan, but this game might just as well make me into one. I remember me and Neighbor Gaming, we watched all of the Harry Potter movies in a matter of a few days. There are good books, good movies, and you have probably heard about that also. Hogwarts Legacy, keep an eye out for that one. Now, of course, we have Starfield, which everyone is also waiting for, probably, maybe. And the next Elder Scrolls, which will be out in 2030. 
do you plan on buying any of the colorful faceplates for your PS5? You know what? I ordered black ones. Remember I said that a couple of videos back, but it has just never arrived. So I don't know what's happened. I will just have to order new ones then, but I want black ones. What are some things that you like and dislike about your PS5 compared to the PS4? I want to say that I like everything. There's nothing that really stands out to me. Like, wow, this is something that I dislike. But I do miss themes, the ability to have themes in my main menu. But I'm getting used to not having that. So it's not like that is a big issue or something, but because it isn't. I can still say that the menus are sort of confusing. I'm so used to PS4 menus, but I'm getting there. Do you like the PS5 controller? Is it heavy? It's heavy enough slash it's on the heavier side. I still feel like it is a bit too big for my hands. I would like a smaller controller. I would actually want, I hope PlayStation watches this video and take my idea. Now make this controller just smaller, the same controller, just in a mini version. PS5 controller mini. That's gonna be so much more appealing to small children hands also, and my hands, and I am a children. What the hell? What about multitasking features? How are they? Apps in the background, etc. Spotify is great. You can play your games with Spotify playing in the background. Now, you cannot play a YouTube video in the background using the app, but I have another <laughs> sneaky way of doing things. Now, if you send a message to someone, google.com, you click on that, you get the secret web browser for your PS5, you put in there YouTube, you find the video that you want to watch, and then you put the entire thing pinned to the side while playing. Now, that is a weird way to do it. It's it's a sneaky PS5 hack of doing it, but you can multitask on your PS5. And lastly, which games am I playing right now? <laughs> I'm playing quite a lot of games. Now, I have started Ryza 2 all over again. I am currently also completing uh, Crystar, working my way through completing everything within that game. It's a game that I played a couple of years ago, but I picked it up again now. Also Destiny 2 again, which is so different right now from when I actively played it. They are updating that game ridiculously much. Right now, I am looking forward to starting Sniper Elite 4 and Ease 9. <laughs> Is 9, which is in the um, plus extra catalog. The naming is terrible. Plus essential, plus extra, plus premium. <laughs> now, I think that is a long enough video and I hope I was helpful in some way, shape or form. What? Now I am thirsty. I'm going upstairs to edit this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.